Hugh Redman from Bridgewater in Somerset. As a young serving soldier, married his wife Betty in November of 1940. He was a man passionate about youth and youth work, giving many youngsters chances and experiences that they may not well have had without the work that he did. He was the person that made the initial contacts with Western Supermare's twin town of Hildesheim in northern Germany. As far as known, through a chance encounter with a youth leader from the town in a motorway service station. This video tells his story as seen through the eyes and experiences of two of his children, Jill and Mark. Um, yeah, Dad started in youth work when we moved to Bath. Uh, we, uh, we came from Bridgewater, the family. He um, had a job in a youth, um, in a youth club at, in Bath uh, on a council estate called White Way. Uh, that, that was the youth leader at White Way. Um, that would have been 1957, probably. I was five. Um, he was there for, we were there for, my mum, mum had a business there. Dad was at the youth, worked at the youth club. Um, so they were very hardworking parents, both of them. Dad would work in the mornings and then in the evening, obviously, with the youth club. Um, and he started off with the youth exchange or taking um, groups abroad there because I can remember I was been thinking about this I can remember him taking a youth party to San Sebastian in Spain which would have been probably about 1960 because uh, I remember him bringing us back presents you know I always remember him bringing me back some castanets <laughs> and, and, and a bracelet yeah. so that's when it start. that's when he started organizing youth groups to go overseas abroad uh, and the first and that was the first one I remember Spain he also went to, I know he took a youth group to Belgium. Um, that, was, that was obviously later on. The German thing, I'm not quite sure how it actually started. And I, I don't actually remember why it was Hildesheim. I think it was a connection with the youth worker there. There was obviously, it was a very, very strong connection with the guy that was the youth worker in, in Hildesheim and dad in, um, in Western. And I, I can't remember how they met, but that was, I think that was the trigger. That was the bond. Um, I think there was, a, there was one he went to before Hildesheim and it was some, they were all near Hanover. Um, because if you, I don't know if you know that there was a Bristol Hanover exchange at one stage um, because um, the schools used to go over. So I think Bristol may be still twinned with Hanover. I'm not sure. And I think it, because it was uh, Western was, you know, just a, sort of a satellite town of Bristol and Hildesheim was a satellite town of Hanover. And I think that's where the connection came from. Um, and I can't remember. I'm trying to remember when it actually first started. The Hill, It would have been quite soon after we moved to Western. We moved to Western in 1962. Right, and that's when he started at the Bourneville Youth Club. So it would have been fairly soon after that, probably about 1965, four or five, something like that. Yeah. Um, and once it started, uh, it, it what we didn't have the twinning initially. That happened quite a few years down the track. But he, if they formed a, a very strong bond. The youth workers, both youth workers, formed a very strong friendship and a bond. So they ran these youth exchanges. Uh, for a couple of years, and then those that expanded into music groups and orchestras and sporting groups and other groups that, that would exchange, um, you know, have the exchange going. And they ran for many, many years, various youth groups, go, uh, various groups, not just youth groups, but various groups going over to Hill Design and coming back to, to West. So it, it sort of spread from, you know, from the youth group that went initially. Um, and I know, I mean, when, I actually never went on one of them. And I, I, I'm pre, I, I don't think Mark ever did. None of us actually went. Mum used to go sometimes, but she, <laughs> Dad was just passionate about these youth exchanges. He was passionate about youth work. Yeah. He just loved it. That was, you know, look, he, Chris, he, uh, it's interesting. I've seen on Facebook, a lot of ex Bourneville, uh, youth, well, Western Youth Club members have said how wonderful he was as a youth worker, as a youth leader. And that, you know, they, he say, saved them from going to prison and, you know, by speaking up for them in court and, yeah. you know, he could always see the good in kids, you know, yeah. whatever their background, he, he just loved young people and could really identify with them. You know, and they obviously loved and respected him too. 
So, um, you know, I think he built a really good reputation, particularly on the on the council estates, you know, because the, the second um, youth club was built um, between the old Mixon, Wind Whistle and Bourneville. It was built on a piece of land in between the three estates. Um, so, yeah, very challenging, um, but something he just, you know, it was it was his, his heart, it was his life, really. He just loved it, just loved it. And so, you know, I think it was, and he was also a very good organiser, um, loved taking, loved organising people, loved organising things, and <laughs> travel was just part of it. And he made some very, very good friendships with people he stayed with over in, in Hildesheim. Um, one of the one of the lovely young ladies we had staying with us was a became a very good family friend. Came over for my wedding. We went and stayed with her and her family. Um, and even since we uh, emigrated to Australia, he went back to Germany a couple of times. When we went back to uh, he went back to England. He would always, if he could, he would always make a trip to Germany to catch up with the people that he befriended over there. Um, and, and they really held him in such high esteem. He would come home with the most amazing gifts. Um, you know, there were a lot of civic ceremonies for him. You know, he was <laughs> he was the bee's knees over. Oh, they were they were wonderful. Dad never spoke German. They always insisted on speaking English. Yeah. I mean, he should he should really have learned it. The number of times he went there, he should really have learned it. A bit, but never did he could he could order it. Yeah, he always but, said he could order but, a beer. Yeah. German hospitality was just. Absolutely wonderful, second to none, really was. Yeah. And I think that's why he loved going over there because he was made so welcome. A slightly personal question, and by all means, tell me to mind my own business. As a child, did you ever feel jealous of the other kids that your dad worked with? In so much as no, never. Busy? Yeah, that was his job. My eldest brother, Paul, was a member of the youth club, um, but the rest of us weren't. I think I had my own, my own friendship group, um, I, I was at the grammar school and had my a very good group of friends there. So it was a different, um, and we actually moved, we started off on the Bourneville estate. When dad had the job, he we still had our business in Bath. So yeah. we were given a council house on the Bourneville estate. Um, but then we moved into, we moved uh, just off Devonshire Road into Nisdale Road. So we weren't actually on the estate. So we formed different friendship groups. Um, I yeah. was involved with a, a church youth group very heavily. They were my friends. And I, I never felt jealous about them, yeah. you know, the kids that he worked with. No, yeah. no. I think I think mum felt it. I think my mum, because, uh, you know, mum was, from the time that he started his youth work, he was out every evening, just about, apart from apart from the odd Saturday, uh, and he was always home on a Sunday, um, unless he was at a conference or a youth conference or overseas or, you know, doing, organising yeah. something. But I think she... Um, felt quite lonely at night. I mean, there were four kids, so you know yeah. we were always sort of hanging around. But I think um, yeah, that's how it was in our days. Just parents. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I remember uh, Dad working as a lorry driver for a oh, it was Western Farmers. That's right. And they were a food merchant, taking food to the farmers and everything else. And he used to do that his job, and I used to remember it. I sometimes go with him, you know, we'd go. and so he, we did that. But in the evening, he used to, he wasn't paid, he used to go to a youth centre in Bridgewater. I, I can't think what, I can tell you what it is, but I can't actually think of the name of it. Anyway. That's what started him off on it. Um, I didn't actually go, because I was only young then, obviously. Um, we left for Bridgewater when I was five. So it's very early, you know. And then we moved to Bath in 19... Uh, sorry, in 1955. And we were there until 1962. Because... He had secured himself a job at the White Way Youth Centre in Bath. And then we moved to Western in 62 because, here again, he, he wanted another challenge and he applied for the job. Down, you know, down, down at the Bordeaux. And of course, at one time it was in the old community hall, right on the greens. Yeah. 
uh, which is still, I think, a club, if I remember right. It, 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 it's yeah, the present. Yeah. Right now, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so he would live there for some time. Of course, all the time he wanted better premises. And through a lot of you know, hard work and fundraising and everything else, eventually they secured the new place down you know, next to St John's. One year he got awarded the Locking Trophy for services to youth. Yeah. And that was, um, so that was to do with the commander at RAF Locking. Of course they were, oh, they, they, they were like cadets, weren't they? Yeah. Anyway, he, he was awarded that one year. When he retired, um, he said to man, right, we're going to Australia. She didn't really want to go. She didn't want to leave her friends here. She was very much involved in the church like I am. Yeah. And, um, but she went to his state, but she, he organised everything. Yeah. She didn't really want to go. Oh. But, but anyway, I mean, they, they enjoyed their lives while they were there, you know. And then they, they both had a very good life. Very good life, yeah. because it was amazing that they had the English pensions, and Dad, of course, had his teacher's type pension. After they became Australian citizens, they also were entitled to an Australian pension, which they never even paid in for.